Okay. So today we're going to talk about the place value system. Okay. So with every class, we try to try to narrow it down to two or three key ideas. Okay. These are the things that if your friend misses the class and they say, what did we talk about on Wednesday? You should tell them these things. Okay. These are the things they need to know. They know how, need to know how to do. Okay. So they need to know, of course, the positional system. They'll need to know something called the chip model. Standard form. And we'll also talk about pairing numbers. Okay. So the positional system using the chip model to represent things in the place value system, how to write things in expanded form, and comparing two numbers, seeing which one is the bigger of the two numbers. Okay. So the place value system is something that we are really familiar with. Okay, we use it all the time, and that's good and bad. Okay, it's good because we know how it works. It's bad because we use it without thinking about it. Okay, we're so familiar with it that we don't have to think about it. So that makes it difficult to show it to somebody who doesn't know it yet. And when you guys get to the classroom, you'll be dealing with that type of situation, okay? Students have to learn that place value system. Now remember, we talked last time about how our method of writing numbers is actually relatively new. Okay, you can read here, elementary mathematics for teachers in section 1.2. Uh, where does it tell us? It tells us that the place value system came into use in the Middle East around 500 to 800 AD. All right, so, Roughly 1500 years ago. I know that sounds like a long time, but the Egyptian system that we talked about last class, well, that's like 5,000 years old. Okay, so people had been writing numbers using the Egyptian system, using the Roman numeral system. The Greeks had their own thing, kind of like Roman numerals, but they used their own letters. Okay, so people had been writing down numbers a long time before they came up with this positional system. And the positional system, the it's also called the Hindu Arabic numeral system, uh, basically took over. Okay, so started getting used in the Middle East during the Renaissance when Europeans started trading with people in the Middle East. They adopted that number system just because it was a heck of a lot easier. Okay, if you don't believe me, try doing a long division problem using Roman numerals. Okay, it doesn't work so great. So let's talk about a few things here. What does a student need to write down things in the number system? Okay, so the first thing that a student needs to know, okay, the place value process. We need to form bundles. So in other words, we're going to be collecting the ones, we're going to be collecting the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, etc. Okay, so we're going to form bundles like that. If necessary, we need to rebundle. So that you have no more than nine of each denomination. Okay, so form bundles, if necessary, rebundle. Okay, so you're forming bundles of ones, of tens, of hundreds. If you have thirteen hundreds. You'll need to rebundle that, okay? 
How should you rebundle that? I have 13 groups of 100. What should I do? Okay, right. Make that 1,300. In fact, sometimes we say that in everyday life, right? We might say, oh, how much did you pay on your credit card bill this month? Oh, I paid $1,300. Okay, you know what that means, right? They paid $1,300. So they take 10 of the hundreds and they rebundle them. They change it in for one group of a thousand. Okay, so that's what we mean when we say, if necessary, rebundle. Okay, so once you've done that, you form your bundles, if necessary, rebundle. Now you just need to count up the bundles. Count the bundles to determine that to determine the digits that we will put in each place. Okay. So. Let's go back uh, over to here. Okay. Let's do a quick example. Okay, using the chip model. Okay, I'm going to write down a number using the chip model. In fact, I'm not even going to tell you what the chip model is. I'm going to try to get you to figure it out as we go. Okay, so let me look at this here. Write down this. Okay, so what number do you think I'm representing here in the chip model? Okay, 527. Okay, so not too hard, right? So what are we doing? We're counting up the chips that we have in each of the trays, okay? So the trays are telling us how much each of the chips represent. Okay, so each of these chips doesn't represent one, it represents 100. These don't represent ones either. They represent tens, and these they represent ones. Okay, so we have five hundreds. That's what's represented right here. Here we have 20. And over here, finally, we have seven. Okay, so. Okay, that is the expanded form of our number. Okay, so we got an introduction to a couple of these things right here. Chip model, we know what that's about now. You need to make trades and put circles in those trades. Expanded form, well, the expanded form is kind of just how we say the number anyway, right? And then the actual positional notation the decimal number is right there, 527, okay? So it's stuff we're familiar with, but like I mentioned, that's good and bad. Sometimes when you're familiar with it, that means you use it without thinking. When you encounter your students, let's say kindergartners, first graders, things like that, we have to break it down, look at the skills necessary to do each step because they haven't uh, half worked that yet. So a couple of things to remember. Remember, our system is positional. And positional means that the spot the, the digit occupies refers to 
how much it counts for, okay? If I switch the two and the seven, I'm talking about a different number, okay? If I put a seven here, I'm talking about seven tens to one, okay? So it's not just the symbols involved, it's where the symbols are that determine the value of the number system. Okay, so I want you to do uh, one or two things here. Try this for practice. I want you to write each of these using the chip model. Let's start with an easy one. Let's do that one. And then let's try this one. Okay. I want you to try both of these in your seats. I'll come around and check to see whether you've got the right idea. You folks in Zoom land, try it too. Try it in your in your notebooks. Okay, so help me out here. This one isn't too bad. It's kind of like the one we just did, right? So uh, how many trays should I make? I need three trays. Okay, so we're going to have a tray for the hundreds. I'll probably just start abbreviating it like this, 100 or OCMD or something like that. The tens and then the ones. Okay, so I'll have a tray for the hundreds, tray for the tens, tray for the ones. How many circles should I put? Four, okay, each one, two, three, four, how many? If one go in there, three, okay, so four hundreds, one ten, three ones, like that, okay, so the expanded form of course would look like four hundred plus ten plus three. Okay, now this one's a little bit trickier. Tell me about the differences between this and this. Okay, we need another place. We need another tray in our chip model. Okay, so that's one difference. We're going to need four trays. One tray will be for the thousands. Another tray for the hundreds. Tens. And then one. Okay, so that's one difference between the two problems. There is another difference. What's another difference? Right, one of the trays is going to be empty in this case, okay? So that's why this thing is important here, okay? This thing, this symbol makes the place value system possible, okay? In the Roman numeral system, they have different symbols for groups of 10, different symbols for groups of 100. What's the symbol for 10 in Roman numerals again? X, right? How about the symbol for 100? 100 was C, right, C is in Charlie, okay? So if I wanted to talk about, some, uh, so here I do in Roman numerals M, 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 M. I have to put five M's. Then I could go, well, I, I could put six X's, that's one way to do it. Another way is I could do 
LX, and then I could do an I, okay? So for our positional system, we don't have different symbols if you want to write thousands, okay? You have to put it in the thousands place. But for that to work, you need a placeholder. You have to have a way to represent an empty place. That's a big thing in the place value system. Okay, so in our thousands, one, two, three, four, five circles, what about this? All right, leave it empty. No hundreds. Six tens, one, two, three, four, five, six chips there. And finally one down here. Okay, so expanded form. 5,000 plus 60 plus one. Okay, I don't need to put anything in the middle there because there are no hundreds to put into the mix. Okay, so 5,061. So remember, if your uh, textbook asks you write something in expanded form, don't panic. It's just the way you would actually say the numbers, just written down with math. Okay, all right, great. So Another thing I want to talk about here is comparing numbers. So comparing numbers. So let's try and think like teachers. Remember, we got to break this down, okay? You know the answer right away. Okay, very familiar, comparing these two numbers. But we got to break it down and think about why, because we're going to be dealing with students that don't have the practice that you guys have, okay? So we're looking at the two numbers. Which one is greater? Okay, 723. So 723 is greater than 372. Now let's think about how we know that. I mean, they have the same digits. They both have a 2, they both have a 7, and they both have a 3. So how do we compare it and decide which one is larger? Okay, right. So one of the things we got to think about is we actually start from the left. Okay. Now I want you to think about think about what I just said. We're starting on the left. Okay. We compare the leftmost place. Okay, whichever has the bigger value in that place is the bigger number. Okay. Now let's be uh, kind of very critical of what I'm saying here. Okay, think about what I just said and try and apply that to this. How about 1,407 and how about that? Which one is larger? Okay, this one is the larger. Okay, now think about what I was just saying. What was I just saying we do? Start from the left. Okay, so we start from the left. This has a one, this has a seven. So by what I just said, this one would be larger. Right? So what did I leave out in my description? Because remember, this is stuff we have to think about when we're introducing the concept. If you just say start from the left, whichever one has the bigger on the left, that rule that we just did would say, there's the bigger number, right? Because it has the bigger number on the left. Okay, right. So we've, we've got to compare how many digits a number has. That second rule, that rule that I mentioned, that's like a second level of comparing the two numbers. Okay, first level is how many digits does the number have? If one number has more digits, it's automatically a larger number. If you have a four-digit number versus a three-digit number, 
this is automatically the larger number. Okay, so that's kind of the first level of comparing two numbers. So does one number have more digits than the other number? Okay, if yes, then you can figure it out right there. If they have the same amount of digits, now you got to start going from the left and comparing the various places. Okay, if they have the same number of digits, you go from the left and compare each place. Okay. So maybe we'll talk about that. We'll talk about strategy for comparing two numbers. Here are the number of digits. More digits. Means you have a larger number. So second level, if you have the same number of digits, now you start comparing the various places Most digit matches, then what do I do? What if I had, let's say, these two? Okay, let's try this. Let's try to put these in order. From largest. Smallest. I guess the official word would be greatest to least. Okay. So they're all four digit numbers. Okay, so now I got to go starting at the left. Okay, they got four. All of them have four. Okay, so that that step did not tell me which is the largest, which is the greatest. So I go to the next one over. Okay, so now which one is going to be the the greatest? All right, this one right here. So we're looking at the hundreds place now. Which has the biggest value in the hundreds place? This has the biggest value in the hundreds place. So the ordered answer. 4,735. What next? Right, this guy. Because now we're comparing these two. So 4,573. And finally, 4,357. So let's think about our place value process and try to answer this question. What is the largest four digit number we can build with these digits? Let's make it nine, seven, zero, and five. Okay. I want you to think about that for a sec in your seats. I want your number to contain those four digits. It has to have a nine somewhere, it has to have a seven, it has to have a zero, and it has to have a five. What's the biggest number? that you can make, the biggest four digit number that you can make.
you could sign your name and then pass this around to those of you here. Okay. So I want to make this as big as possible. So what should I put first? Put the nine first. Okay, this is the biggest single digit. So we want that over here. What next? Seven. What next? Five. And then finally zero. Okay, so we want to make the number as big as possible. Put the biggest digits over here. Okay. What if I ask for the smallest four digit number that you could make? Okay. Certainly, uh, certainly seems reasonable. If you say you want to make the number as large as possible, put the largest digit over there. So the opposite would be you want to make the number as small as possible, put the smallest digit over there. There's a little trick though. One more time. Not four right, that's not quite four digits. If I put a zero in front, zero, five, seven, nine, that number is 579. That is a three digit number. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. So we got to put the five first to actually have a bona fide four digit number. Now I almost wrote this. That's not quite right. Okay. Oh, right. right, I should switch those. You said it right. I, I wrote it. So I was like, okay, let's see why that's not right. Okay, so you do want the biggest over here when you're trying to make the number small. You want to put your big digits over here. You just can't have a zero in front because that doesn't quite count. So this is the smallest four digits. number that we can make. Okay, so something that's kind of a useful tool as we're working with the place value system is looking for tens combination. Okay, the place value system is base 10, meaning if you get 10 of a single group, then you have to change those out for one in the next highest group. Okay. So every time you reach 10, um, in the old days, we used to call that carry. Okay, you have to carry over to the next place. Okay, so in other words, something like this. So what shall we do? Let's try this. We'll try 74 plus 16. Okay. Now, I know it's not ours, but of course, remember, we are very familiar with the place value system. So it's not hard to us because we have practiced it. As students are learning this, they can't rely on experience because they don't have experience yet. Okay, now the thing that is tricky with the standard pencil and paper algorithms is the carry. Okay, and we'll talk about ways to make sense of the carrying and why it works the way it does and things like that. Okay. But this thing, if we were if we were to do it standard pencil and paper, just write down what your answer would be. Just write down how you know how to do an addition problem like this. Okay, so if I was doing this and I was just, somebody said, okay, you got to do this, do a pencil and paper. What do I write here? Zero. What do I do now? Okay, I put a one up there. And now what do I do? One, seven, one for a total of nine. 
in that place. Okay, so that's a little bit more sophisticated. You don't learn this until probably the end of first grade, maybe second grade. Okay, so there's stuff you have to know before you start to do this, in other words. Okay, so one of the things you need to recognize is all right, there's a six, there's a four. Six plus four is 10. That's a 10 combination that indicates we're going to have to go over to that next place value. Okay. Another way to think about this uh, the thinking here you got 74 plus 16. We're seeing that 4, we're seeing that 6. Okay, that's a 10. I can kind of bring the 6 together with the 4. So instead of seven tens, this is really eight tens. Okay. So now it's basically a one digit problem. The 70 that we started with, 10 from here, and then this 10. 70, 10, 10, 90. Okay. Let's look at the chip model. I would just need two trays to do this problem. Okay, the tens and the ones. Now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seventy, one, two, three, four. Seventy-four. Sixteen. One. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So describe to me what I did there and why did I do that? What's happening here? I'm trying to draw the model for this addition problem. Why did I put the chips where I put them? Okay, right. So this first kind of line here. Seven, four, 74. What are we throwing in with that? We're going 16, one, 10, and then six, one. Okay, now is this an appropriate chip model for my answer? What was our rule for the place value system? Right. I have 10 here. What's the max I can have? Max I can have is nine. What do I do if I go over? Right, we have to carry or rebundle as we were talking about at the beginning of class. So I have to take these 10 ones and rebundle them as a 10. Okay, notice what I've got now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chips. And how many would I have left over there? Zero, they're all gone. We had 10 of them. We had to change those into this one. This is the new chip. Okay. So this is something we'll talk about a bit more when we get to dealing with the algorithms like this over here. But this is how we can illustrate why the carrying works the way it does. Okay, six plus four. Well, we have 10 here. So we'll take those 10 and move them over. That's why we get a zero down here. That's why we have to carry one extra over to the tens place and do seven plus one plus one. Okay, so the idea that we need to be thinking about as we're working with our students is that math needs to make sense. People are very good at remembering things that make sense. Okay, if you're just trying to remember random bits of information, well, that's almost impossible. Okay, let me try a little experiment here. I'm going to give you some letters. I'm going to write down some letters. How many am I going to write down?
Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I am going to say nine letters, just regular letters of our, of our alphabet. Okay, I don't want you to write them down. I want you to try to remember the nine letters that I am going to write down. E, S, A, D, N, E, W, Y, D. Okay. What were the nine letters? Okay. Okay, there was no, there was a Y in there, but I don't think it was, there was an N in there. Okay, there was a W in there, there was a D. What was the fifth letter that I said? I don't know, I wasn't really paying attention. <laughs> N E W. Okay. So how many people would be able to reproduce this if I asked them to do it on Friday? If I put this on the quiz and say, what were the nine letters? Okay. So I'm going to say the nine letters again. We'll practice. So I'm going to say the nine letters again. I'm going to jumble them a little bit though. W. E. D. N, E, S, D, A, Y. Repeat the nine letters. Okay, right. So if I ask you that on the quiz, could you reproduce that? So how come we can remember, it's the same nine letters. All I did was change the order. How come we can remember the second list? If I ask you, let's say, what was the fifth letter I said in that second way that I said it? What was the fifth letter? E, right? It's, that was the fifth letter. How did you remember that? What, what was the fifth letter in the first way I said it? Okay, N, all right, but it's pretty hard to remember that first way because in the second way, we don't really have to remember the individual letters. Okay, we just remember Wednesday. Okay, and since we know how to spell Wednesday already, we know the whole list and we can pick out any individual position or anything like that. Okay, so when you can put things together into a larger picture and understand how the pieces relate to each other then you can remember it easily. If you're talking about remembering individual isolated facts, well, that's almost impossible, okay? And that's what we need to do with math. Math can't be individual isolated facts. It has to be a bunch of things that fit together, okay? So that's what we're trying to do when we say we wanna make math make sense. Okay, so I gave you an assignment last time. So it was on page six, and I believe it was one through six, correct? Seven, seven one through seven. Okay, great. So I want you to read from page seven through page 12. This is in Elementary Master Teacher. Page seven through page 12. And on page 13, I want you to answer questions one through six. Okay, now, those questions, they're going to start referring to these books. Okay, if you have your, uh, if you have your book, you can check them right now. But I believe they refer to this, this, and this. Okay, I think there are questions that refer to 3A, 4A, and 5A. It's the textbook they're talking about. There should be two with your bundle. You should have a textbook and a workbook for five. Okay. Uh, the problems in this section refer to the textbook. Okay. So um, we're going
we're going to call it a day for now. Remember, quiz on Friday. Okay. I'll put some more information about this stuff on Canvas. Oops.